Hi, welcome back. Happy New Year, everybody. This is uh, my first video of 23. Seems like everyone enjoyed the Advent Calendar series. If you haven't seen that, there'll be a link um, somewhere. Thanks to all the new people that have joined uh, the channel. Hopefully I'll have some interesting things for you in the coming year. Right, some time ago, um, I got these, uh, a set of bore gauges. They're not the uh, highest quality, but they are perfectly functional, um, and I've used them a fair bit, certainly the smaller sizes. I haven't, uh, haven't needed to use the uh, the two big ones yet, but uh, I'm sure we'll we'll come up with some reason to use them. But anyway, I was curious how how these things worked because basically you've got these plungers that um, squeeze in and out like that, and then you tighten, you put it in a ball, let go, and then you tighten the bottom there and it holds it in place so you can measure it. Now, you know, being inquisitive, I wanted to know quite how that system worked. So I started unscrewing things. And if you unscrew the bottom, you just find that there's a a push rod. So it's like, well, no, that's not it. So then what else can I unscrew? Oh, well, the top bit here. And then I unscrewed the next bit here, but um, I was being an idiot and I was holding it by the sides, not by the plungers. So when I undid this, the internals of this thing launched themselves across the workshop, never to be seen again. But let's have a look at what we have in here. So there's a, the couple of barrels there's a pin which sits inside the spring that's just to basically stop the spring bending when it squashes together and then in in here sits this pin now this pin is um, driven by the bottom pin up but it's also got a spring now what that spring does is it just applies a little bit of force onto this these slots so the larger plunger has a, a through slot and the smaller plunger just has a, a pocket in it which um, basically stops the thing flying apart because the pin stays engaged uh, and uh, locks the two together. And then when you tighten the, the lower screw, that pushes a little bit harder um, and stops, stops the thing moving altogether. This is the smallest one I've got. This is the 8 to 12.7 millimeter range one. Um, and all I have left is the outer um, plunger, the pin and the head. The so I need a smaller plunger, I need a pin, and I need a spring. Now these dimensions and stuff I've sort of guessed a bit based on sort of um, scaling down the, the larger one um, and you know, obviously measuring what I've got on the bits I've got remaining. So in order to repair this, I need to make these parts. Let's do that. So for this project, because everything was so small, uh, I used my ER11 collet set, which uh, was originally bought for other purposes, but it came in very useful here. So using a very small collet, uh, two and a half millimeter, um, I put in a bit of 2.4 millimeter brass bar um, to make the the pin. I used high speed steel for a change because I most of the time use carbide but on stuff this small um, and needing to be very very gentle uh, a sharp very low tool pressure tool is ideal now I cleaned up the bar just to make it run true because obviously the collet shut wasn't running very true being held in a three jaw I then used the Joe Pye method of just taking a really big cut and leaving behind the right side the right diameter just by trusting your numbers and it and it worked um, then parted it off. I was hoping that I could 
bend this off with my fingers but it was still a bit too strong so I just carried on parting while holding it so it didn't disappear into the chip tray. Flipped it round uh, using a one and a half mil collet to hold the thin end that I just turned I could then clean up the other face So moving on to the plunger section, I've got a piece of 3mm diameter bar uh, and bored it out with a, a drill bit to the diameter that I needed to drill it out to, which I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Um, but I've got drills in 0 0.1 increments, so that was uh, a relatively easy thing. I'm just using a 2mm end mill there just to flatten the drill point at the end. I then used a one and a half millimeter end mill to cut the slot and finally parted it off and just put a piece of bar in to catch it and it fell off. Then went back to the collet chuck to hold the tube I just turned um, so that I could put a radius on the end. Right, to wind the spring, I've got a one millimeter drill bit in this uh, collet chuck here. And this is a spring with 0.3 millimeter wire, which I'm gonna basically pull straight-ish. So I'm just untwisting it, basically all the way to the end. It's got a bit of a wibble in it, but this will hopefully get pulled out in the in the process of turning it into a new spring. And then pass it through this welding tip, which is held in a tool holder. There we go. Put a kink in that. Tricky bit is getting this in here because there's not enough bloody space for your hand. Right. You get in there to bring this in nice and close. So I've done a first turn. Let's do one more. Right, brought the tip right up close to the drill bit so that I can pull hard on the, on the wire to get the spring to be nice and tight um, without deflecting the tiny little drill bit. And now I've got the uh, change gear set to 0.8mm pitch, lead screw is engaged and I'm going to turn it m by hand. drill bit <laughs> and then right now I'm going to disengage the lead screw and just finish off the spring there we are and then I can wind out I'll snip that off tidy these ends up meet you back at the bench so these are the parts that I made um, the spring and the pin goes in there and unfortunately the plunger when I tried it out let's see if I can get this focus is it the um, the metal was just so thin the 
retention pin just went straight through it and it crumpled which is no good so I had to make it all again basically in order to make the wall thicker I've got to make this hole smaller so I needed a smaller spring and a smaller pin and here they are so I don't know if that looks it does look thicker doesn't it yeah that looks quite a lot thicker so that seems to work quite well I've got my spring I've got my pin let's put it back together There we are, back together. So that now squashes. I think I've made this plunger a little bit too long, but I'm just pleased that it works, basically. I can tighten it up, and they stay out. They stay in, sorry. And then release, and then pop out. There we go. Alright, my set's complete again. I shall try not to do that again. Thanks for watching.